Kia ora and welcome everyone to this small service with me, Margaret Tooley. Uh, today we are at the end of the church calendar and next week we begin a new church year with the four Sundays of Advent that look forward to, to the coming of Jesus. Uh, but this Sunday is called Christ the King Sunday where we celebrate the reign of Christ in glory but also the King among us as one who serves. So let's focus with some quiet music as usual. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And so we come to pray. It is good to be in your presence, Lord, in this oasis of peace within our busy week. Speak to us through worship and prayer and in moments of quiet reflection. Speak to us as we read your word and ponder it. It is good to be in your presence, Lord. It is good to be in your love, Lord. It is good to be with you. Amen. We come to God mindful of those ways that we have fallen short, we've missed the mark, where we have not lived as we ought, and offer our lives afresh to God for forgiveness and cleansing and renewal. Let us confess. Lord God, your love for humankind is present in the beginning of all things. It extends through history and touches even my life. Your love sees failings and forgives. Your love heals pain and wipes away our tears. Your love knows grief and comforts the sorrowful. 
your love sees sin and still loves the sinner. Forgive us when we fail to live lives that reflect your love. Forgive us the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your spirit and empower us to serve you this day and all days. Amen. As we come to God, he holds out his forgiveness to us, full, rich and free. Be made new, be born again. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We come with a prayer in our song today. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. scripture reading today is from the book of Matthew and um, it's a rather long one but very important one so here is the word of the Lord to us today Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46 when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him he will sit on his glorious throne all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and write you in or see you naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick 
and when did we see you in prison? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Jesus has finished telling stories. He's now on his way to Jerusalem and has a big message for his followers. He foresees the day when all the nations will be gathered together to be judged by Jesus the King, not a mighty king, clothed in pomp and majesty, but a servant king, one who always made room for the weak, searched high and low for the lost, he was a magnet for those pushed aside as losers. The lonely and the overlooked sought him out. He was found among the least, and this is the ground for judgment. How have we treated the least? Fed the hungry, given a drink to the thirsty, welcomed the stranger, clothed the naked, cared for the sick, visited the prisoner. I'm surprised that both groups, the sheep and the goats, have the same response. They were both surprised. The sheep on the right to learn that they had done something for Jesus. When did we see you hungry? The goats on the left were surprised to learn that they had failed to do something for Jesus. Why? Had I seen it was you, of course I would have taken care of you. But I didn't. I just saw people who didn't seem important or worthy. Why the surprise? Perhaps that Jesus himself had been present in every person they met, and most especially the ones he calls the least. How amazing. If you want to meet Jesus, go and give your time, your energy, your heart to those who deserve it the least. Even more, open your eyes to find Jesus in everyone you meet. The good news is that this challenge given by Jesus can be met by anybody. We don't have to have bags of wealth to give away. We don't have to find a cure for cancer. We don't have to begin a charitable foundation. We can't solve all the problems of the world. But we are called to be a difference, to make a difference, actually, to be the difference. Jesus simply tells his followers to look for him and to find him everywhere and in everyone. It is in the sacred, in the midst of the ordinary, in every day, in every place, in every one. A story. There was once a stone monastery tucked away in a forest. For many years, people would make the long journey to come and visit the monks to find healings for their souls and refreshment. But in recent years, fewer and fewer pilgrims were coming. The monks had grown jealous and petty in their relationships with one another, and you could sense the animosity. The abbot was distressed and sought out his good friend, the old rabbi, Jeremiah. When he heard the abbot's tale of woe, Jeremiah asked, to offer a suggestion. Well, of course, said the abbot. J 
Jeremiah said that he had received a vision, an important one. The Messiah was among the ranks of the, of the monks. The abbot was flabbergasted. One among his own was the Messiah. Who could it be? He knew it wasn't him. But who? He raced back to the monastery, eager to give the monks the news and to share with them that one among them was the Messiah. The monks grew silent as they looked in one another's faces. Was this one the Messiah? Was it that one? Could it possibly be that one? From that day on, the mood in the monastery changed. Joseph and Ivan started talking again. Pierre and Nabu forsook their frosty anger and sought each other's forgiveness. The brothers began serving each other and seeking healing and forgiveness where they had given offence. As one traveller and then another found their way to the monastery, the word soon got out. This once again was a remarkable place. The pilgrims took the journey to the monastery to be renewed and transformed, all because the monks knew that the Messiah was among them. Do we want to know Jesus? The people are around us. The place is here. The time is today. So be it. Amen. We come to hold our world before the Lord as we come with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Open our eyes to see as you see and weep as you weep. Open our hearts to love the broken and care for those without hope. Open our hands to hold what we have lightly and to ch share cheerfully. Open our mouths to speak for the voiceless and to shout for mercy. Open our ears to the gentle whispers of your spirit and to obey what you say. Open our lives to the call of your voice and the needy cries of the dying. We lift to you those we know who are grieving, suffering and sorrowing, and ask that you would be their mercy, their healing and their restoring. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Because it is Christ the King Sunday, we rejoice, the Lord is King. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. Rejoice. Again I say, rejoice. Jesus the Saviour reigns. The God of truth and life. When he had purged our stains, he took a seat of us. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. Rejoice. Again I say, rejoice.
rejoice in glorious hope. The Lord and Judge shall come and take his servants up to their eternal home. God's word informing you, God's peace encircling you, God's spirit upholding you, God's love defining you. Go gently in the world, become the difference so many have yet to find. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.